Live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, MarkLogic, and Teradata. Now, here is your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Big Data NYC, everybody. I'm joined by Jeff Frick, and this is theCUBE. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Big Data NYC is our event that we hold in conjunction with Hadoop World and Strata. This is our fifth year covering Hadoop World. Really excited to be here. Ken Krupa is here. He's the enterprise CTO at MarkLogic. Really interesting company that is the leader, actually, in NoSQL. That doesn't mean, folks, NoSQL. It means not only SQL. Ken, yeah, welcome you. to theCUBE. Thank you, welcome. No, I mean, thanks for welcoming me. Well, you're good welcome, you. and uh, <laughs> it's good to have you. So yeah, Mark Logic, really interesting company. Not a ton of people have heard, you know, you hear so much hype about, you know, the key value stores, and you guys kind of quietly emerged as, as one of the leaders. We have you actually as, as the leader in, mm -hmm. in that space. How'd you get there? So, um, patience, I guess. Yeah. Right? We've been <laughs> around for it's a virtue, years. they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 13 years as a company, and uh, you know, re-envisioning what a database should be, right? So our founder, Chris Limblad, he was <laughs> really approached as, hey, this, if you took this search technology that we've been hearing about and made a database out of it, what would you get, right? Uh, and that's really what, what we set out to do. And you know, through the years, as, as the um, terms in the industry were evolving of defining technologies by silo, uh, you might say we, we had a bit of a, a, you know, where should we fit, an identity crisis of where should we fit? I guess five or six years ago, this notion of NoSQL or something other than the database that you're used to, right, the relational rows and columns database, really emerged and that meme took off. So sometimes the meme just kind of takes off and it comes to you and you go, oh right, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that messaging that defines what we are and what we could do. And so we've, we've been running with that, but still w we don't like to be put in a, in a silo, right? When, when I meet with customers and they say, so are you search, or your database, or your this? We, we say, well, you know what? Um, we, we like to redefine the boundaries of what a database should be, right? I personally don't think search and database should be two separate things. I think if you're putting your data in, you want to find it. So, Logical. So yeah, right, right. <laughs> and if you think about when the relational databases were born, right, there was always this notion of, yeah, there's, there's this keywords to find some text in there as well as values. So it, it's really been more of the technology inertia of when search could be achieved at the scale that it could be, post-dating the invention of databases, right? Mm. So, so right now we're in this place where we like the NoSQL, uh, we like, like the notion that everybody kind of latches on and knows what that means. We, we can certainly differentiate ourselves as enterprise NoSQL, but what we really like is, is this redefining of what should a database be in terms of what the expectations have been, yeah? Okay, I, I, I'm gonna, I love it when a CTO comes on and I can ask like, like what I call Columbo questions. So let's start with NoSQL. I right. start out the segment said not only SQL. What, what does that mean? So um, what that means is that the, the language that you use to ask the question of your database is not, is not really what should be defining what you should get out of your database. So NoSQL is an easy thing for people to say, all right, it's not a SQL database. But SQL really is just a language, it's a domain specific language for asking a particular type of question provided you could visualize your data in a certain way, right, rows and columns. So what we said was, okay, but let's not limit ourselves to just because we don't start out with rows and columns, let's not limit ourselves to saying, you can't ask a SQL question. It's one of the most successful domain specific languages uh, so, you know, in technology, let alone in the database domain. So that's why we said, you know what, SQL is still useful. You're not going to turn on a dime and say people are going to stop asking SQL questions. So let's embrace that as well as all of the other paradigms uh, through which you can ask questions of a database. Okay, an another question I have is, is Key value store. Everybody throws that term around. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's key value store. It's key value store, and people associate right. that with NoSQL. Right. What is meant by key value store? So, in the NoSQL space, that's that's you know I've heard that as one of the you know X number of definitions. There's the or the, or the first one. You know, there's a key, some identity for something, and then there's stuff that maps to it, right? 
that's morphed a little bit where you've got uh, this definition of like a document store, right, or an object store, which you might consider Mark Logic falls into that category. Um, it, it, what I do like about it is that it's this notion of it's, it, it, there's this identity of particular things that you're looking for, right? Whereas in the, in the relational world, the, that identity was sort of something that maybe didn't live in one place, right? It was, it was this emergent identity. But at least key value said, all right, I've got things, I've got people, you know, I've got places, um, and, and I, wa I want to give them an identity. Um, that is, uh, that's the way I see it. In the technology space, key value store means something like, uh, yeah, I've got, I've, I've, got, I've, I've, I've got this very simple model where I have a key and I put anything I want in it. And, and, and the anything I want in it can be defined a certain way. We get a little bit more specific and we say, we've got a key, if you will, but you, the stuff that you give us, right, the, the objects, they have other descriptive information in them. So you know, we talk about XML and JSON as ways in which you could present self-describing data. So what you get in that packet is you also get schema information. Mm. So schema is data for MarkLogic. It's not an orthogonal thing that you've got to predefine somewhere else or predefine at a specific point in time, right? It's something that comes with the data that now allows you to, to do better analysis and discovery. Okay, so you think about schema, rows and columns, you mm. got identifiers for, you, for, for those. Uh, and then we were talking about um, schema on read, yes, term that yeah. you used, and then we heard Amy O'Connor talk last night about when she goes and, and talks to practitioners, they have to get their head around no schema on write. Mm. What's the difference? They sound like cousins. Maybe you can no help us understand on that. Yeah. Um, so no schema on write and schema on read. I guess they're not mutually exclusive. Um, I see it as you don't have to pre, in a prerequisite way, decide all the questions you want to ask. Right. And that's, re that's really what that, it boils down to. That's really it, right? You don't it's need to know the questions ahead of time. Right, and, and when you think about it, it's kind of counterintuitive. Like, when you want to do discovery on a topic, where do you go? You, you start typing something yeah. into to, right. to some search engine, right? right? You just right. go and say, okay, yeah. right? You don't say, let me create a table. <laughs> all right, I'm going to think of I everything I might want to know about this topic I don't Put know some about data in there and, and stuff it in there, right? So, <laughs> so this notion of, of uh, you know, a schema that, if you know a schema, great, that's great. If you've got a model, if you've got, a, if you've got tables of stuff, that's good information, great. Let's not, let's not throw that away. Um, if, you, um, if you don't, that's great. But more importantly, as you, as you do that, 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 that I mean, you have that conversation with your data, I say, yes, I talk to data, I'm sorry. Okay, out for everybody to see, I talk to data. Like um, when, you <laughs> when you have a conversation with, with these sort of the corpus of data, a model might emerge, right? And, and that's more natural. That, that, that's a more natural thing where um, you're saying, oh, right, yeah, and you, you mentioned pulling the signal from the noise, right? You find a signal, and you go, okay, that's something that's worth modeling. So I actually don't like to think of schema on write versus schema on read, it's a continuum, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you read it, you write back, as, as you're doing discovery, you know, that conversation also involves you enriching that information, right? So that's another paradigm shift that, that, that we're seeing at MarkLogic. We're hearing it from our customers, really, right? You know, we, if you're doing the right thing, you're reacting to, 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 to what the customers are, are telling you and trying to get a little proactive of where they're gonna go next. And, and one of the places is in this notion that search is not a read-only operation anymore. It's not, right? It's something that as you find that signal, right, you go, okay, this is valuable. Let me decorate that information with other information, the human-to-computer interaction, yeah? And, and then that's available for the other folks, right, because you're not just doing this in isolation, particularly in an enterprise, if you're an intelligence agency, there are lots of people who are interested in what everybody else knows. There's a crowdsourcing of, of all that knowledge, if you will. So the search operation, if you will, should be conversational. You should be writing back. You should be asserting new facts. And um, so we're hearing a lot of that from our customers, and, that, and that's, a, that's a really, you know, it sounds, you know, it sounds obvious, but then you're like, but yeah, but we haven't been doing it, or we haven't been thinking about it in those ways for many years. So that's one that, that we're, we're particularly interested in. So Ken, you talked about um, Mark Logic has this ability to sort of se have self-defining, you yeah. know, environment. Uh, is, mm -hmm. that, is that IP? Is that a fundamental sort of uh, component of 
the technology in general? Can you talk about that more specifically? So when you say self-defining so, environment. So, you so, just so you were talking about the, the, the ability of your database mm -hmm. to have other information that helps you self-define Right, where you, where you, can, you, can, you can enrich yeah. Yeah, the information. Right, and so that's because uh, we're a database, right? And so the, the comp, you know, so what did I just say, right? So the, the definition of a, of a database is something that you can also write to, right? So it's, you know, so search intuitively, people have, have thought of it as something that you, you know, you just, you, you, you ask questions. But a database, people for years have been saying, well, it's also something that you write to. So, so that's really it, is that, is that we, we have this, this very powerful platform that can speak a lot of different, you know, technical dialects, if you will, but also give you the ability to, to, um, to update it. It's really, it's really, it's really mm -hmm. that simple. And to do it at scale, right? So the notion of wanting to do this isn't new. You, you might say that when d databases first came out, that was the whole idea, is I want to read and write from this database. And then I, and, and SQL, you know, structured query language, right, is this notion of, okay, and now I'm going to ask you a question about what I put in. The technology now has caught up, right? We've got a lot of new, we've got a lot of techniques now. We, we, can, we can scale out, right? Uh, the cost of hardware has, you know, keeps going down. Uh, the notion of um, a critical mass around commodity hardware and what you could do with it and just, you know, as you need more scale, you pop in more nodes into your racks. Um, that all converging, you know, sort of in, uh, you know, in the last 10, 15 years is what gives us the ability to, to, to do that. So all the concepts have been out there things have come into alignment nicely for us mm. to do that. At a, at a different economics. Much profile. different economics. Because right. Larry Ellison would say, oh, we do this. So mm. It's called Oracle. I remember when yes. IBM bought Lotus Notes, he said, stupid acquisition, we're going to do all that in Oracle. Mm. Now, of course, <laughs> say what you want about Lotus Notes, yeah, but yeah. it's all this unstructured data. And yeah, yeah. Oracle will stand up and say, we deal with unstructured data, we deal with structured yeah. data, blah, blah, blah. And of course, they have a yeah. Uh, a, 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 a NoSQL product that right. I, don't, I can't find any customers of it. But but my 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 point is, in theory, you could do it with a mm -hmm. with a r relational database, mm -hmm. but you couldn't do it economically at scale, as I think what I'm hearing, right? Uh, or no? In, in a sense, yeah. well, you could. Um, so the the statement that you said about Oracle is correct, except it's not just with a relational database. So it, name a product category, Oracle has it, right? So they certainly have it, and so it's not untrue for them to come in and say, yeah, we can do that. Okay, well, yes, a lot of people can do a lot of things. Putting it all together is not, you know, is, is not as easy as people might think, right? So if you have all these disparate products, you, you, whether it's Oracle and a number of acquisitions that they've made, or uh, going completely on the other end of the spectrum and saying, well, let me find what I can get it, from source. the open source community yeah, yeah, and sure. put it together, the answer is yes. You could do that, but in the middle there, the reality is um, a lot of time, a lot of cost, uh, and in some cases, there's a lot of brittleness associated with that, right? So, you know, I talk about uh, us being, uh, you know, multivariant in some ways, and by that I mean, you know, you could you could you can model things in a lot of different ways in Mark Logic, or not model things. You can ask questions in a very structured and unstructured way. Um, so, uh, you know, case in point. <coughs> Depending upon who you're talking to or, or what set of features you're looking at, you, could, you can consider us a search engine, right? um, a NoSQL database, um, a transactional NoSQL database, right? because you might want to make a distinction between the two, or a triple store. Right? So this, this notion of semantics and triples and, and, and you know, the W3C standards like RDF being able to model what they, say, what they call machine-readable knowledge, right? So that's three or four products right there. Integrating those is hard. Integrating them in a way such that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, such that when you ask a question, and you're not sure the type of question you're going to ask, you're not sure if the question is best expressed you know, as a you know, graph problem, or a search problem, or uh, a structured type of question. If it's a question, or better yet, if it's a question consisting of all the above, it really, really helps to have uh, sort of one body of, of information uh, and one product that can handle all that. I just say it strikes me too that it's been a perfect storm of all this Moore's lawishness, if you will, yeah. across a number of product categories: network, CPU, graphics cards, databases, storage. 
you know, to drive the cost down and the power up. But also the thing that strikes me is, is Google's influence on a younger generation on the expectation of access to this type of information wow. and how I'm going to get it. It's a Star Trekian, right? Mm -hmm. Star Trek on the set they talked to the they talked to the machines and the machines answered their question. With Google now, and you could even argue maybe now that we're not allowed to text in the car, now mm -hmm. we're all really talking yeah, right. to our phones and asking questions. Where before someone would never even think of that as a possibility to dive into the enterprise to actually ask a simple question and mm -hmm. get an answer back as to what is our HR policy. I mean, something as simple as that, which was buried in a PDF, mm -hmm. attached behind a firewall that you had to VPN in, mm -hmm. and maybe you could find that page. Right. Very different paradigm. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a great point. And it's funny, you bring up the Star Trek thing. I've, I've given presentations before, and then sometimes I actually have uh, a video of, uh, one of the Star Trek movies where, 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 you know, where they go back in time and, and, uh, and Engineer Scott picks up the mouse and goes, hello, computer, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm telling him, yeah, that resonates. What do you want to do? And then they're like, just use the keyboard, and he uses the keyboard. Oh, how quaint, right? So I, mean, I, lo I love that, that clip. It's, it, you know, so, you know, spoiler alert, probably my next presentation is going to have it again. Um, but yeah, that, that's just the point. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, operational friction associated with trying to, you know, that we've become accustomed to. And accept. And accept, accept it's like it, bad yeah. cell phone service, right? We accept it. We yeah. never would have accepted that with our landlines. Well, but, right, yeah. Right? We, we kind of accept it. Everyone's scratching, yeah. and you're going to drop, drop call, calls, okay. right? Uh -huh. Call back. Right. Right, landlines. are like, why'd you hang up on me? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, probably the first few cell phone calls went that way until they figured it out. So, yeah, no, but you're right. That, 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 that shift of expectation is great. And, 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 that, and, that's, and that's really what we're embracing, right? And we are, and, and you brought up the enterprise, not necessarily the, Star, the you know, Starship enterprise, but within the enterprise, behind the firewall, that another, another key point of ours, because uh, one, of the, one of the other reasons why, why Mark Logic was formed was, yes, and we have to do the types of things that, say, Google does behind the firewall, it, where it's a slightly different paradigm of how information flows around, right? Uh, you don't have the same critical mass of, you know, billions of people on the planet, right? Um, so, you, you know, you don't have the same statistical advantage, right? right. Um, at the same time, you know, the, there are all these security requirements, as you mentioned. Who's allowed to see what, right? You know, the Google model is more open, you know, for good reason. Uh, so taking that and, and saying, okay, well, well, this notion of you've got these folks, once they get into work, they start thinking differently and, and speaking a different language, right? Understanding that language of how people, you know, uh, you know work speak, right? And, uh, and then respecting the security boundaries, right? That there's need to know, uh, and particularly defense intelligence, another customer segment of ours, uh, is, you know, what, what should you see, right? And what, what are you supposed to see? But making it seamless and, and friction-free, or as close to friction-free as possible, as close to just having a conversation and, you know, saying, you know, maybe the computer comes back and says, I'm sorry, I can't tell you that, right? But not where, you know, why, can, why don't I know? Why am I not getting right, the answer? Right. Yeah. Kind of curious as to how you, you got here. You mentioned you got a search engine, NoSQL database, a transactional database, the semantic engine. Mm. Uh, how did that come about? Is it architecture? Is it some, was it somebody's vision? Was it serendipitous? Um, so all the above, right? <laughs> the serendipity part really is, you know, you might say that's the customers, right? If we put that in that category. The customers will, will communicate to us, you know, it would be really cool, right? And in fact, that's how the company got started, right? Customers telling Chris, you know, it would be really cool. Uh, but then the vision to say, you're right, that would be really cool. Let's, let's do that, right? Uh, and then the architecture, great point, because you have to think where you want to take it, particularly when you're architecting these sorts of things, right? because the things that you know are going to be important are more difficult to do after the fact. You want to, you want to say, you know, I want to put some scaffolding in place here, or, or I want to focus on a foundation so that when that, that next cool thing that the customer tells me, or you know, not cool but important thing that, that the customer tells me about, I can layer it in, right? So, so, this, so semantics is a great example, right? So uh, this was as a result of our Mark Logic 7 release, um, uh, last year, and we added this triple store capability. But it wasn't like we said, okay, let's just acquire or pull off the shelf some triple store and try to stitch it in to, to Mark Logic. We said, you know what? We've got this incredibly scalable 
and security optimized, right, with respect to who can see what product. This, this engine that scales out, right, let's build the right indexing that leverages all of that capability into our triple store so that when we come out with our triple store, it inherits all of that. It inherits all of that quality of service and capability. And so that's what we have. So those three aspects are exactly right. You, you mentioned the three. Is it, you, it, they're, not, they're not mutually exclusive, nor, nor should you take away one if you're going to be successful. You, 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 have to, you have to architect it right. You have to have the vision. And, and you have to know when serendipity is kind of, you know, hit you over the head with a brick. Hey, wait a minute. That's something I should, you know, focus on. So as somebody in the database world, you know, John Furrier always says, five, six years ago, if you went mm. to a party and you asked somebody, you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm in the database business. They go, oh, see ya. It's cool now. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's become so cool. There's like dozens of, of database yeah. companies popping out and everybody's trying to predict the, you know, the moves in the chessboard and the yeah. winners and yeah. uh, the open source piece is another wild card. Yeah. So, uh, tell us, help us figure it all out. What, <laughs> what's going on out there? What's going on? Well, yeah, so data is cool again, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah, you don't put that on a t-shirt, right? Yeah. I'm sure there's uh, lots of them uh, down across yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure the bank full of that. But, uh, yeah, so, so um, you know, and not to get too philosophical here, right, but the business that we've been in, right, has always been called one of two things information technology or data processing, right? So we'll, you know, some variation thereof. Uh, so it's not been called, you know, hardware technology or software technology or even, and I love my smartphone products, app technology. It's not even that, right? It's still called information technology, right? So it's always been about that. And we keep coming back to that, that all those other things, hardware, software, and apps, they are ways on ramps to provide information, right? To, to, to give us new insights, new discoveries. So we keep going through this cycle, right? Like I remember I was, I was doing data warehousing stuff before this stuff called the internet came along. I was like, data warehousing, you know, star schema. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute, there's this internet thing. You know, I'm just, you know, gone, right? For a while, right? Until you realize that, wait, the internet thing is just a, a hyper enabler of all of what we, you're trying to accomplish, right? Because not everybody's contributing and everybody can get the information from everywhere. So, um, so it's always been about data. And, and, you know, all of these things are coming into alignment now, right? Because public data, right? You talk, you talk about commercial and open source. That's great too, right? Because that creates... Uh, ecosystems where the barriers to entry uh, are, are as low as they can be, right? And, and depending upon where you are in terms of how much you want to roll up your sleeves and, 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 and just, you know, do a lot of it yourself, that's okay because maybe you don't have the budget, right, to do it any other way versus, you know what, uh, I, I've got an, some economies of scale, I've got some budget, I've got some capability, and quite frankly, I don't have the time uh, to do that, and, and, and I have another way that's going to work for me. So what's in the enterprise space? What's in the commercial space? So it's, you know, it's an exciting time right now, uh, and scary and all that other stuff. But it, it's, it, it's, you know, data has always been a part of it, uh, will always be a part of it. It's always going to be called information technology. Watch 10 years from now, we're going to change the name and we're going to put up this quote. Who's this, who's this idiot, right? But uh, it's, it's, always been, it's always been called information technology. And, and so that's, that's why we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're just coming back to where we've always been. What, uh, what, what things excite you either you know, professionally, personally, mm -hmm. technology-wise? What's, uh, what's so so that, that stuff excited me, as you can probably tell, mm -hmm. and I'm jumping around. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm, uh, so professionally, you know, I'm... I'm I'm a geek at heart, you know. Uh, I, I've always been into technology, uh, not so much uh, as an industry, but as uh, regardless of what industry I've been in, it's always been about what technology can do, right? Uh, along those lines, I think we're, 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 it's interesting to think of well, how, how that's cannibalizing itself. It's, it's really not a technology industry anymore. It's just kind of everything, you know, has a technology component to it. You know, your car. Right, you, you know, there's a, lot, a whole lot of technology in there, right? Now, you know, it's Wi-Fi cars. So, so to me, it's like, you know, technology eating the world um, uh, is, is, is something that I could ruminate on for, for a long, long time. Uh, personally, uh, all of my personal interests point back to technology, right? Sports, right? You know, big Yankee fan and um, 
getting into you know some of the uh, you know I was really into the World Cup like most Americans every every four years yeah. getting more and more <laughs> yeah, into yeah. it. So All really right, we love soccer. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and uh, and I'd say football when I'm in the right place. So yeah. for a global audience, I probably have to say many things, but um, but technology there as well. So so uh, my kids, the games they play. You know, I've I've got uh, you know one of my sons. He's he's at that perfect Minecraft age. Yeah. And uh, probably plays my kid. Oh, <laughs> yeah, probably right. And uh, yeah, maybe he, was your kid the one who blew up his house? <laughs> so I don't know. Something happened. But um, yeah. So so. It, Really, the, the the fusion of what my personal interests are and my professional interests are is just that, yeah, you know, technology is just an integral part of everything. Uh, it, it's not a single industry sub-segment. I like to think about that a lot. Uh, I like to worry about that from time to time. You know, but, you know, I have kids, right? So what yeah, does that sure. mean? You know, the rules the rules are changing much more quickly. So, um, so yeah. So cool. Ken, really a pleasure having you on. And uh, great to see the tailwinds that are... Uh, at uh, Mark Logic's back now, and uh, and you guys participating in earnest in this space and really making a difference. So thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Great, thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is the Cube. We're live from Big Data NYC. Right back. <laughs>